I just, I look at him and I say, are you okay? You look cold. He said, I'm fine. Your jar of hot piss is keeping my hand warm. <laughs> the problem is, is that rough sex obviously leads to problems, right? It does, it does, it does. But problems also test the relationship. Now, I got something which I'm going to say, and now I can see there are quite a few women in this room, so, so relax. I got cystitis. Okay, I heard it. Did you hear a couple of women go, ah! Oh! When you say that word, some women genuinely believe when you hear that word, a nasty little elf runs in the room and jabs you out the piss hole with a needle. <laughs> it's okay, you're all clean. Um, what happened was um, we weren't very careful. You know when you have sex, you have to have a reasonable level of hygiene. We didn't. Uh, we just <laughs> had sex. He fell asleep on top of me, half in, half out. Everything got crusty, it all backed up, and then my kidneys failed. <laughs> That's how I like to describe it at dinner parties. <laughs> so I rang, I, now I wanted to keep this a secret because remember I'm still trying to be Disney. So I rang my doctor and I went, hello, I've got cystitis, please help. And the woman on the other end of the phone goes, okay, the only appointment we've got is first thing, can you bring us in a sample? And I said, okay, uh, how? And she went, can you urinate into a sterilized container? Like a jam jar. I was like, this is the modern NHS, and you want me to wee into a jam jar and wave it at a nurse. <laughs> I was like, how is she going to cure me with your modern ways? Is she going to put a leech on my foof? <laughs> if I want one of those, I will go for a walk in Dorset. <laughs> and plus, I thought, I don't, I don't want to be rude, but I don't know if I trust the authority of the receptionist. Like... I don't know if she's there on the other end of the line playing some kind of weird office top trumps. <laughs> where she's kind of there going, Marie, Marie, get the chart. I've just made a woman with cystitis piss into a jam jar. <laughs> and Marie's there going, that's nothing. I've got a woman with IBS. I've just made a fart into a carrier bag. <laughs> but in the end, you know, you're in pain. So you think, well, I'll just go for it. So I just said, OK, thank you. So the next morning, I got up early and I got my little jar um, and he caught me after I'd made my sample, right? <laughs> um, and he just said, what are you doing? And I, was, I had to tell him everything, and I said, I've got cystitis. And he said, why didn't you tell me? We'll go to the doctors together. So I'm there, first thing in the morning, driving the car, and the love of my boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> is sat next to me holding the jar. Now, I don't know what a sample is, medically speaking, so I just filled it up. <laughs> it, it was one of those jars that my mother had made jam in, right? Um, so it's pretty hefty. I mean, I'd taken the jam out first. <laughs> Not that you could tell. <laughs> oh yeah, this, this thing had bits. It had bits, and it was like this pinky yellow, just disgusting, right? And I'm looking at this horrid spectacle, just like, really? <laughs> Are we ever going to make love again? Is he ever going to respect me or love me? And in the end, I, don't, I want to say so much to him. I want to say, look, I'm sorry, I'm a real person. And in, in the end, I think, well, I'm Titanic. It's all going to fail. So I just I look at him, and I say, Are you OK? You look cold. He said, I'm fine, your jar of hot piss is keeping my hand warm. <laughs> By the way, darling, you might want to take the label off. You're about to hand in some plum and ginger jam. <laughs> we get to the doctor, right? We get to the doctor, I say, give me the jar, sweetie. And as we're about to walk in, I look through the glass doors and I can see all these people. And there's like families and frail people and I think nobody needs to see this, right? So I do this. Yes. I hide it in my coat, and I go in because I'm being socially conscious. And I sit down, and he sits next to me. The woman goes, Diane Spencer? Now, I assume this is the person I've been talking to on the phone. So I get up and go, hi, I've got cystitis. <laughs> like I'm selling it to her. <laughs> she takes one look at this and screams, oh my god, get it off the desk! And everybody looks around, and I go, no, you told me to do this. And she goes, oh, why would I tell you to do that? It's unhygienic. And she gets this tiny little pot that's like this big, and she puts it next to me. She goes, you've got to do it in that. And I went, okay, okay. So I unscrewed the jar, right? <laughs> it was like I'd released wasps into her face. She just goes, ah, no, you've got to do a new 
on, there's a toilet around the corner. I was like, okay, okay. So I put the lid back on. Now, like, the, the, the pot she's giving me is so fucking this big. You take, you're literally taking the piss. And, like, the, 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 the jar's this big. And I'm like, is this, like, is this part of her top trumps, you know? <laughs> like, is she just going to make me wee into ever-decreasing pots? <laughs> Just because she's bored. Like, I'm going to hand this back. She's going to go, ah, well done. Next level. See if you can piss into a thimble. <laughs> so I take the jar and my thing. And I go into the cubicle. Now, it's pitch black. So I take a step in. The light comes on. I'm like, oh, thank you. There's one cubicle. There is one, it's one thing. So I pour away my little sample. I was a bit sad. And I go in. Now, when you pee, when you go to the toilet with cystitis, it hurts. It hurts so much. It is an eye-crossing, finger-clenching pain when you wee, right? You try having that pain when you're trying to hit a receptacle <laughs> that fucking wide. I was lucky getting it in the jam jar with my aim. Because when you are blessed with big, meaty curtains, <laughs> God has not given you a guidance system. <laughs> Most days, I sit and I hope. If I have sat on one of my flaps during the day and it is stuck halfway up my bottom <laughs> and I am not aware of this and I start to pee, due to the surface tension of liquid, the urine will grip the flap and it will ride halfway up my butt cheek before anything falls in the toilet. So I'm there bent over in searing pain, scraping a sample off my own ass. And then the light went out. Because <laughs> it's a motion sensitive toilet. <laughs> Insert your own pun. And uh, <laughs> so I start waving at Jesus. And I'm like, hi, Jesus, it's me. <laughs> I know I'm usually on the roof, but right now I'm stuck in the toilet and the light's gone out. Can you help me, please? And when Jesus switches the light back on, I have got half my sample in this stupid little pot. The rest of it, in my haste to alert Jesus to where I am. <laughs> I flicked it up the door, and there's even a little bit on the ceiling, and it's just pinky yellow awfulness. <laughs> and I, I don't know what happened really, like in real time, I just remember mumbling to myself, I didn't touch it. That's what I'm saying, I just left it, I washed my hands, and I didn't do it, I didn't do it, it wasn't me, I didn't do it, I'm sure it was there when I went in. <laughs> And I went up to the reception and put my stupid pot down. And then as I went to sit down, he gets up and goes, two minutes, babe, and walks into the one cubicle. <laughs> Bye. I'm like, oh, well, at least he's got a story to go out on, you know. <laughs> Do you remember that time when he dated that weirdo who pissed in jar? <laughs> That'll be me! <laughs> and then he comes out and he sits next to me and says, Babe, did you see the piss up the door? <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah. I mean, you hear these things about the NHS, but you don't realise how bad it is till you're actually here, you know. And then he went, was it yours? <laughs> and you know when you want to lie to somebody, but you don't make it up quick enough, and they're watching you, your face, as you're lying in your own mind, and you're kind of going... Nah, nah, nah. And I sort of went, oh, yeah. And I thought, this is it. This is the moment where the iceberg hits. And he just went, well, after a hurricane, there's always a little rainbow, isn't there? <laughs> I was like, you, you don't want to leave? He's like, well, I'm not going to leave you. You're in the doctor's in pain. I'm not going to leave you. I was like, oh, yeah, that's why you're not going to leave. He's like, no, I'm not going to leave because I love you. I was like, <gasps> I love you too, Kevin. His name's Kevin. <laughs> that guy just went, good. It's good that in that tender moment you got his fucking name right. <laughs> <laughs>